Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me trying to do an, uh, a random prompt I haven't done before, an algo prompt anyway. Maybe one day I'll branch out. But, uh, but yeah, let's, let's do an RNG one. Let's see. We have 1227 airplane seat assignment probability. Another problem where there's a lot of negative downvotes. But uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good day, a good week, uh, a good weekend. I don't know. Uh, I am currently 70 hours into my fast, give or take an hour. Uh, I can't do math anymore. But yeah, so let's, uh, so please be kind and we'll see how this problem goes. All right, end passengers are boarding, or uh, end passengers board a plane with exactly end seats. The first passenger has lost the ticket and picks a seat random. After that, the rest of the passengers will take the seat that's available and pick other. I think I've seen this one. Um, hmm. Oh, I, I haven't seen this particular problem, but I think this was like one of those like math trivia things. And I guess once you understand the logic, you uh, you could generalize to n. But I don't remember this. I remember seeing it, or I remember the vague idea of it, but I don't remember the solution. So I guess we'll play around. All right. So the end person will get his own seat. Hmm. There is that some sort of cascading thing, so I'm trying to... And, I, and this one, honestly, I'm trying to not, like... I, okay, let me let me kind of um, clarify a little bit, you know? Uh, for for this one, to, if this was a contest, I would most certainly... Um, I would do a couple of things, right? I would try to work out... I would try to work out, like, for N less than 10 or something like that, either physically, meaning on pencil and paper, or write a for loop and do like some RNG thing and then kind of see if I could gauge the uh, the pattern and then solve it that way. So that's what I would do on an actual contest uh, and I might still do that like a little bit later on if I get stuck but I want to because I, I think there should be a so you know like that's the way that I would attack this problem it may not be the easiest way or cleanest way but that's how I would do it but to be honest, I'm trying to do a little bit better for this problem in respect to just like using my brain because I, I know that this is like a brain teaser, a mathy brain teaser type thing and you just have to apply the math. The math the math slash programming part is just the generalization, right? That part is fine. But uh, but I think the actual intuition is um, it's something that I'm trying to figure out and I think that is more interesting to just try to see if I could figure out versus like pattern matching or, you know. Um, so that's why I'm kind of doing it this way. And as we saw, probably it's a little bit slower um, because I'm really fast on the pattern matching often. I don't know if that's true in general, but often it's true. So anyway, yeah. Um, hmm. So I'm trying to think. Okay, so if the first person gets it right, then it, be then it basically becomes a recursive problem, right? But that's just like 1 over n factorial, which is ridiculous. Um, but that's not the only case, right? So, well, okay. So let's think about it another way. Uh, so the first person either gets it, their own seat and then it becomes I guess you could also program it that way too, actually, to be honest. Because 10 equals a fifth. No, I mean, okay. So if you think about it as DP, what happens? Uh, first person gets the seat, then it just becomes an N minus one problem. Okay, and you have one N, one over N chance of doing that, obviously. Otherwise, it takes someone else's seat. Right? What is that as a state? It's n minus one things. But not quite, right? Because it means that the next put Actually no no no, I forget that okay, let me let me rephrase this. So I was wrong already. So because if the if the first person gets their seat, 
then everything actually everything follows because they they don't pick randomly. Sorry, I, I must have it. In, I had it in my head a little bit off, right? So that means that if the first person gets it right, then okay, fine. If the first person gets it wrong, then what does that mean, right? If the first person gets it wrong, then it doesn't mean the second person, but can it generalize the second person? I don't know. Well, okay. So the, if the first person gets person two, then obviously person two also R and G. So then that's when you get the uh, n minus one randomness thing, right? But if the first person gets the third person, what does that mean? If the first person gets the third person, then two fits, three swaps with, three gets a random one. Because three has no choice, but it terminates if you take seat one, because that means that there's no more in the future. So that means that if one gets three, then um and we cannot get any previous numbers so actually with if it's one minus three or if one goes to three then it effectively because all the previous numbers would just match. So that means that it just becomes n minus i. So it becomes actually n minus 2 in this case, um, where it is the same state, but but now effectively the person 3, you're, you're trying to see what are the odds of it finding person 1. And if we find person 1, then we're done, uh, or seat 1 if it's done. Otherwise, it just kind of, cascade forward where where um, it's the same state but now someone else has to find seat one right okay I mean that I think I understand at least now like how this thing works but then I, I don't know if it's just a matter of summing the series And you could probably figure out the math that way a little bit. Even though the, the, um, the way that I say it is an n square solution, so that's going to be too slow for that big. But I wonder if there's like a, a, a easier formula where everything cancels out. That's what I'm trying to think for this one. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can generalize in my head. So here, now we have a sort of a DP solution. It's not going to work for 10 to the fifth, but we can play around with it. So basically, there are two states, right? There's the... Um, Okay, let's just say f for now, right? So basically here, assuming that f means if we row f, row with n items left or n seats left, right? So then here, you have 1 over n times of it being good because if it gets its own seat, then everything else will just be correct. So this is this times one, one for, you know, just a base case of it being correct, plus, um, okay. So then it becomes n minus one over n of not, obviously, but there's a little bit caveat here, right? Because this is actually over two, because because one 
one of them, because you can actually choose the last seed, and then the, there's zero chance that the end person gets his own seed, right? So yeah, and so I think that's just this is the sum. Oh wait, 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 this is a little bit off. So this is the thing, but this is converting it to a state in which this is m n minus. Eh. Um, well, this isn't the n squared solution. I think there is some like thing around this. So it's actually this isn't right. But yeah, so maybe um, total is equal to this, and then the, the uh, I got confused a bit, right? So then here. Um, I don't know, something like this, right? So then this is just this plus 1 of n times f of n minus i or something like that, right? And, um, yeah, but of course this has to be at least 1. So if this is 1, then that means Let's say you pick C2, then yeah, okay, yeah, okay, then it's N minus 1, okay, yeah. Um, and I think this is N minus 1 for the reason that we talked about, and then you could kind of uh, take this out of the loop and then just subtract it from the other thing, right? Or divide it from the other thing. Um, uh, and then, and yeah, and of course, I'm a little bit lazy to talk about dynamic programming, so I'm just going to do the lazy cache here and then see if it's correct for, well, it's correct for these two, but uh, right, let's see if it's correct for these. Okay, so that means that our recursion is good, but also it just means, looks like that everything is 50%. I'm trying to understand why, is there not a logic? I mean, obviously now we can kind of, you know, like this is, this is pretty, I mean, that's what I mean by pan matching, right? Okay. Usually the pan matching is a little bit trickier than this, but I mean, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, this is pretty straightforward uh, pattern matching, um, but it is still a good practice for dynamic programming, to be honest. Um, but yeah, let, let me see, I mean, without looking at the solution, let me see if I can understand this part, right? Like, cause I feel like if the answer is a half, that means that there's usually like a really good way of thinking about this problem. Like there's some like one insight that you're like, oh, of course it's one half, right? But I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and this may be not super interesting anymore. And this farm, in a way, isn't like a good interview farm for stuff like this. But but it is fun for me sometimes to kind of just play around with it. So, so that's what I'm trying to do now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm just gonna cheat. I. I don't think I have an intuition for this brain teaser. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's no intuition here. U useless. Do people not like try at all for this one? I. Uh, I don't know why people submit stuff like this, and you know. I mean, I guess if you just derive the formula, maybe it is very obvious. But I'm just curious whether there's like a cool intuitive solution. But it seems like no one really uh, kind of... No one kind of went there. I don't... Okay, there we go. Maybe that's one. 
I mean, that's basically what I... Well, I didn't have this solution. I, I mean, I have this, obviously. All right. All right, let's see. Only one... I mean, this is basically what I was saying, but... <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So did people just really figure out the math? I mean, people figure out the math, it's fine. Also, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could have figured out this recurrence eventually. Um... But to be honest, it would take me a while. And people, and I'm, you know, I don't know, I consider myself pretty good, but other people may be better. Um, oh, okay. So this is the proof that kind of does it. I'm pretty bad at these, to be honest, but I see how they do this proof. That's actually pretty good. It's almost similar to the prefix something. I guess I could have came up with, if you told me, that I, I need to do this, then I could have done it eventually. I mean, it wouldn't be fast, but still, that's pretty hard. Uh, it's pretty hard for a silly solution. Um, Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess we just did the math. I d I thought that there's like um, like a cool, not mathematical way of like oh, if, of course it works because if you sit here or whatever, you know, something happens. But mm, okay, maybe I accept this that people just did the math. Uh, that's all I have. I mean, you saw how I did it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess I mean in some of the explanations they did basically say what I did, except for that you know, uh, they kind of expanded out more and I didn't really. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, do your mental health. See y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.